Now, this may come off as a bit racist, but I just can't take it anymore. I'm just going to say it. I really don't like lizard people, especially when they disguise themselves in human flesh and refuse to acknowledge their monstrous ways. I just, I don't trust them. Come to think of it, maybe that's why I haven't been able to vote Democrat lately. In today's humble opinion, we're questioning everything we believe in. I am not a monster. <laughs> There are two apocalyptically catastrophic moves a person could possibly make when attempting to build a brand. The first would be to make a first impression by using divisive political humor, but to be fair, both of the Clintons and Joe Biden look like a bunch of lizards shambling around in sloughing meat bags. It's topical. I'll make fun of Republicans when I play a game about Cheetos or the Zodiac Killer. The second apocalyptically catastrophic move would be to release a game that relies on multiplayer to a niche audience and then attempt to revitalize interest by releasing a single player campaign over a year later. You can Trust me when I say that erratic schedules for dated content are not the formula for generating or sustaining any form of interest, even if said content is both hilarious and amazing. Besides, even if it were that formula, I'd have a corner on the market. I wish I could do a review of this title for what I imagine it could be given optimal attention. It seems like it would have been one of the more interesting multiplayer experiences out there, being a blend of turn-based tactics and manipulative paranoia-inducing team games like Town of Salem or Deception. Unfortunately, I have to review what the game actually is at the time of writing this. A very Veritable Ghost Town. Well, except for this guy, and he seems pretty happy to see me. <laughs> I think his name is Dick. Actually, you know what? Maybe it's better this way. I'm starting to think about the game's limitations and how metas would form around exploiting them. Maybe it would have, ironically, been a bigger disappointment, or maybe I'm just a downer. Given that the peak for the day was 22 players, we'll probably never know. To be fair, there's a Discord server that I assume is full of hardcore fans dedicated to arranging games, but if I were a social creature, I wouldn't spend an inordinate amount of time sitting alone and talking to myself in my room. Actually, yes I would, I'm fucking hilarious. YouTubing is just a hobby I entertain because the alternative would be acknowledging that I'm certifiably insane, and that makes you my Wilson. There was one mechanic worth mentioning that I think was a positively fantastic idea, namely, when your character performed positive actions, they would generate morale, and with a high enough morale, they would have access to their innate ingenuity. Using ingenuity, they could combine both of their items for a special ability. The downside was that there were ultimately very limited hybrid skills. I feel like this was the main focus, but not having an ability for every combination of items is hilarious counter to the very concept of ingenuity. And less hilariously, it sets the player up for disappointment. Where initially there was encouragement to experiment, possibly sacrificing powerful items to do so, there was in its place nothing to be gained. The one thing that stood out as a unique addition to the game outside of its premise joined the ranks of its non-existent legion of players and served as a nail in its proverbial coffin, which is both a turn of phrase and a reference to the fact that this game is dead as a doornail. I wish I could say more about it, but what the hell do you want from me? My only options at the time were buggy multiplayer matches using, uh, primitive AI, and a demo for the single player campaign. I could have played the full single player campaign, but when I started writing this review it wasn't out yet, and I started writing this review a few months late. My opinion has been formed, and it is therefore resistant to all forms of being swayed. Was the demo fun? Sure. Fun enough, I guess. The writing wasn't really my thing, but I'm sure it would appeal to a general audience. I might even be willing to play the single player campaign at a later time, but now is not that time, even though it is coincidentally later than the time in which I started that sentence. There's nothing left. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here, so I guess it's time to say that I Am Not a Monster has earned a 2 out of 10. It would be a flat 0 in terms of playability, but I can't ignore the innovation of the premise, and I can't ignore the artistry or the atmosphere of the 50s science fiction vibe. That part was amazingly well done, but I wouldn't buy a game strictly based on those grounds. Likewise, I couldn't recommend a game based on how much thought the developers put into the multiplayer rewards and content for playing the game, because holy shit, there was a point system, cosmetic upgrades, and a reward for leveling up. Truly, it was an ambitious project. It's just unfortunately way too late. That spaceship has sailed. Thank you everyone for watching and special thanks to Cheer Dealers for the valiant effort in revolutionizing multiplayer turn-based tactics. I think going forward the best course of action for this type of game would have been to make a strong single-player experience beforehand and then building upon the excitement and attention that that game gets to promote a multiplayer mode at a later time. I think under those circumstances the game might have fared a little better. Maybe that wasn't financially viable at the time, I wouldn't really know, but it was a shame to have received this game over a year after its release only to find out that its completed mode that I might have actually been able to enjoy wouldn't be out for a couple of months after that fact. Maybe it was just poor timing. In any case, remember that failure is not the worst case scenario to go on with your bad selves and stay awesome.